Hello everyone. So in our last lecture, we have gone through the various cases of image formation with the help of a convex lens. Now we'll apply the same concepts and we'll use the same basic principles to study about the image formation cases with the help of a concave lens. So let us try and study about the first image formation case, right? So here we have a concave lens and we have marked the principal axis, the optical center and the principal focus of the concave lens. Now, in the first case, we'll place the object very far away from this concave lens, right? Or in other words, we can say that the object that we'll place is at a position which is at infinity with respect to the concave lens. So the object is very far away from the concave lens. Now in such a case, we can assume or we can consider the light rays which are coming from the object to be parallel to each other, right? So again, we'll follow the same drill. We'll take a point on the object and we'll take two rays, two light rays coming from that point on the object, right? So here we'll take two light rays, two special kind of light rays, both of which are traveling parallel to the principal axis of the concave lens. So now in this case, we know that for two light rays, for any light ray, which is traveling parallel to the principal axis of the concave lens, the light gets diverged from the concave lens in such a way that it appears to be coming from the focus of the concave lens, right? From the principal focus of the concave lens. So here we'll take two light rays coming from a point on the object, on this distant object, both parallel to the principal axis on either side of the principal axis. So now we know that both these rays will get refracted from the concave lens in such a way that both these light rays will appear to be coming from the principal focus of the concave lens, right? So now we see that both these refracted rays, if we extend them backwards, we'll see that both these refracted rays, they appear to meet at the principal focus of the concave lens. So this means that an image of the point on the object is formed at the focus of the concave lens, right? Now, if we continue this practice for all the points on the object, we will see that an image of that object is formed at the principal focus of this concave lens, right? Now we'll find that the image that is formed is actually a virtual image and it's ir erect in orientation. So for an object placed at infinity with respect to the concave lens, a virtual and erect image of that object is formed at the principal focus of the concave lens. We can also see that the image formed is highly diminished in size as compared to the original object, as compared to the size of the original object. That means that the size of the image is much, much smaller when compared to the original size of the object. So in the first case of image formation with the concave lens, for an object placed at infinity with respect to the concave lens, the position of the image formed is at the focus, is at the primary, is at the primary focus of the concave lens. We can also see that the nature of the image that is formed is actually a virtual and erect image and the image, the size of the image is highly diminished when it is compared to the size of the original object. So this is the first case of image formation with a concave lens, right? So here again, we have used just the basic principles and the special light rays that we have studied about to form the image formation case, right? To form the ray diagram for the image formation case. Now we'll move on to the next image formation case with a concave lens, where we'll move the object a little closer to the concave lens. So now in the second case of image formation with a concave lens, what we'll do is we'll start to move the object closer to the concave lens. What we'll observe is that the image starts to move closer to the concave lens as well, right? The image starts to move towards the direction of the optical center of the concave lens. This means that a concave lens never forms an image of any object placed at any position in front of it beyond the principal focus of the concave lens, right? So an image of any object placed at any position in front of the concave lens always forms between the optical center and the principal focus or at the focus of the concave lens. Now, we'll move the object closer to the concave lens, right? So we can place the object anywhere between the lens and infinity, right? It's the same case because the object, because the image of the object is always going to be formed between the optical center and the focus of the concave lens. 
So here we'll place the object not too far away from the concave lens, somewhere between the optical center of the lens and infinity. Now in such a case, now since we have the position of the object, we can again follow the same practice, right? We'll again take two special rays from the topmost point of this object and we'll try to find the image of the topmost point of this object as formed by the concave lens. So the first ray, the first special ray that we'll take is a ray which is traveling from the point A on the object in such a manner that it passes through the optical center of the concave lens, right? Now we know that this ray is going to pass through the concave lens without showing any deviation, right? This is what you have studied about when we are studying about the rules of image formation with spherical lenses. So the first special light ray that we have taken is the light ray which is traveling in a way so that it travels towards the optical center of the concave lens and we know that this light ray will pass through the concave lens without showing any, any form of deviation. Now the second light ray that we'll take, second special kind of light ray that we'll take is a light ray which is parallel to the principal axis of this concave lens. Now for this ray, we know that this ray is going to refract from the concave lens in such a way that it appears to be coming from the principal focus of the concave lens. So here we can see that once we extend the refracted ray backwards, we'll see that this ray appears to be coming from the principal focus of the concave lens. So now in here we can see that these two refracted rays, they appear to meet at a point A dash in front of the concave lens and this point A dash forms the image of the point A on the object, right? So this point A dash is actually a virtual image of the point A, which is the topmost point of the object. So if we repeat the same process for all the points on the object, we can trace the complete image. Right, so here we can see that A dash B dash is the image of the object AB which is placed somewhere in the front of the concave lens, somewhere between the lens and infinity and we can see that this image is formed between the optical center and the principal focus of the concave lens. Right, we can also observe that this image that is formed is actually a virtual image and is in erect in orientation. We can also see that the image is actually diminished in size when compared to the size of the original object. So this is the second case of image formation with a concave lens where we place the object somewhere between the lens and infinity and the image of that object is formed between the optical center and the principal focus of the concave lens. The image that is obtained is actually a virtual and erect image which is diminished in size. So now these are the only two cases of image formation that a concave lens exhibits, right? Because these two cases, they cover all the positions in which we can place an object with respect to the concave lens. So this tells us something about the behavior of the concave lens, right? The first thing these two cases tell us is that a concave lens always forms an image between the optical center and the principal focus of the concave lens or it forms the image at the focus of the concave lens. So this is the farthest away from the concave lens wherein image is formed by the concave lens, irrespective of the position of the placement of the object. Some more important points that we can observe about the image formation with a concave lens are that the image that is formed is always virtual and erect in nature. And we also see that the image that is formed is always diminished in size when compared to the size of the original object. So these are the two cases of image formation with a concave lens. Now, till now, up till this moment in the chapter, we have studied about the various image formation cases with a convex lens as well as a concave lens, right? We have gone through all the basic principles of refraction of light and we have seen how certain special kind of rays help us understand the behavior of these lenses, these spherical lenses. Now, we'll look at the quantitative aspect of drawing these ray diagrams and these image formation cases and we'll study about how we make various measurements and calculations with respect to any ray diagram of any spherical lens. So in our upcoming lecture, we'll talk about the sign conventions which help us make various measurements and calculations with respect to ray diagrams. See you in the next lecture.